Hey, good morning everybody, Mike here. So it's another beautiful day to be pouring concrete, but I just wanted to go over, you know, not every day is perfect for us. We always, there's always like some issues here or there. Some are really minor, some are a little more than others. Today we had, you know, basically some minor issues. One of them was the, one of the, you know, we had three trucks ordered this morning. We had, it figured right about 21 yards of concrete. Now they can fit 21 yards on two trucks. But usually I order at least one extra yard because the sub base is always not perfect. You know, it's up and down a little bit and you always want to have a little buffer. You never want to run out of concrete. Today, the concrete trucks, the batch plant is about a, it's about a 45 minute ride. So, you know, in order for one of these guys, for us to empty him, him to drive back, get another yard on, come back if we need it, you know, it's going to be well over an hour for that retrip. So. I ordered three trucks, 22 yards to be safe. Well, when I talk to him in the morning, I always call him about 5, 5.30 in the morning to make sure everything's good. He said one of his guys called in sick. I only got two trucks for you. We're going to have to re-trip one if you need some extra. So that's kind of what we're dealing with here this morning. Is we're kind of wondering and worrying a little bit about if we do run out, you know, that getting that balance slowed back is going to be well behind that second truck. It would actually be this guy right here, the first truck. So, and that always creates a little bit of an issue when you go to finish. You know, you got one one small part of the floor that's way behind the other the other parts, and just creates a little bit of a, an issue with power troweling and finishing when some of the floor is really really firm and some of it's so wet you can't even touch it. Still, another little issue we're dealing with is this: we got concrete out of two different plants. These this first truck is from a you know one town, the concrete plant in one town. And then the second truck you'll see here shortly came from a different town, which was in a different part of the state. And you know they were they were a little bit overbooked this morning, and all they had was one truck from each one of these plants they could give us. So the mix design ended up being a little different, even though they were both 3,500 psi mixes with fiber mesh and mid-range water reducer. You know for whatever reason, this load right here felt really really rocky, like. If he had an extra couple hundred pounds of stone per yard in his mix versus the second truck. Um, so we were dealing with a little bit of what we call bony, rocky concrete on this first load. And I mean, that just makes it just makes the pour go a little bit more difficult. Generally, the finish, generally, it finishes OK once you get it down and get it both loaded and all that. But it just seems to kind of separate. A little bit more on you as it's coming down the chute and you're dragging it around and you know your mag floating your edges it just it's a little rockier a little bit more difficult to work with so we try to you know we try to give them that feedback and then they might tweak the the mix design for the next pour and see if that works a little bit better for us so that's kind of how we we work that the second the second truck which you'll be seeing here in a second when he came and mixed up Oh, we're gonna use the Viber screen too on this. You can see how we, you can see how we shoot our wet pads in the in the floor. This was about 34 feet wide, and the screed board is about 12 feet. So we needed a couple a couple wet pads in there to go by. You can see how we screed those those kind of like lanes, and we use those lanes to go by. Here's a second truck showing up. You can see the second plant had front end uh, dump trucks. The first plant only had those rear dump trucks. So we'll do each lane, like Darren just did that bay on the right. Now he's going to go to the middle bay. We'll get that pulled down. See, it looks like we're a little bit high in there, which is a good thing. Since uh, now we're thinking, wow, we, we're, we got maybe a little bit over halfway with this first truck. This second truck might just do it. We might not need that third truck. So we'll get that pulled down. And then uh, Darren's going to go up and go over there on the left and do that third bay. So we're hoping we're a little bit high in that bay too. The reason we dumped that first truck right out, you know, all 10 and a half yards of it right out so we could get him on the road headed back to the concrete plant just in case we did need him. We didn't want to, you know, we didn't want to really just take our time with him and pour it in sections. We, we just wanted to get him dumped right out and get it pulled down and now T is bowl floating it. So the second guy's mixing up and when right now what we're doing is we're like before we hook that 16 foot cold shoot on we're like well, let's take a look at it see what it looks like make sure the slump is right 
And, you know, what we decided after looking at that little pile is he needed about 10 more gallons of water. So we had him mix up with 10 more gallons. And this is what it came out like, about a six or a seven. We can pour, you can pour a good seven inch slump with that mid-range water reducer. Slump is typically how wet or how dry the concrete feels as you're working it. That's what we call slump. So we like, we like a fairly loose slump when we use mid-range water reducers. You see we're, we're battling a little bit of wind there with the poly. In the concrete for reinforcement, it does have fiber mesh in it. You don't need wire mesh in something like this. You don't need rebar. When it's inside a foundation like this, the floor is not going anywhere. Even if it does crack, it's not gonna. It's not gonna separate. It's not gonna. You know, the only thing it really could do maybe is settle if the guys doing the subgrade didn't do their job right and didn't compact it. But for the most part, you know, we can take a look at that and decide when we come up the day before to look at it or the week before to look at it if we think the subgrade is good and it needs any more work we'll we'll let them know then but as far as wire or rebar in these house foundations like this you don't you don't need that stuff the concrete's not going anywhere the fiber mesh is, is plenty good enough and then we saw our expansion joints we'll saw our contraction joints as soon as we get done power trialing today Right now I'm battling that first load was setting up pretty good. That's why we use the hand screed over there. I was screeding that on the left and in order to get enough down pressure to make sure the floor is nice and flat there, we had to use the hand screed over there because the power screed like this, it just kind of floats on the floor. So when the concrete's nice and loose like where we are right now, the vibration will put enough down pressure on it so you can make sure the floor is flat. But when the concrete starts setting up and you've got one mix that's fairly firm and then the other mix that's fairly soft, the power screed just isn't heavy enough to, to really get that edge that's on the hard concrete down enough. So you got to do it by hand. Now this mix here, it, it looked really nice. This was a really good floor mix. There was good paste. The rock didn't separate from the paste at all. The rocks were actually a little bit smaller, even though they were still three-quarter stone. They must have got it from a different source. So this this mix felt really, really good. And we don't use, these guys are quite a ways away from us. We don't use this company. Well, we use the same company, but it's the batch plant. We don't use them very much because they're a good two hours from where we normally pour. This was right in between. So we, this was only about an hour drive for them to get here this morning. Can see how the front dumps they can kind of move back and forth they can kind of control the chute for you a little bit as long as you got a good driver those trucks are really really nice now i'm just i'm shooting my wet pad in the middle getting it to grade and that's what we're going to score our uh, screeding pad off from i got it on camera too you can see we got quite a good charge of concrete in there t is finishing up bow floating and then we're going to score we're gonna score our pads again. Well, we'll come coming down that left-hand side on that stuff over there that's really firm, that first truck. And we're gonna get off that edge. And then we'll go back to the power screed once we get to the loose concrete. You can see how it's loosening up now. So we'll get down, I'll get down there another couple feet and then we'll get that. But again, the struggles of, you know, sometimes you got everything pre-planned. You know exactly where your concrete's coming from in the morning. And then you call that morning and one guy calls in sick and everything changes. You know, you get you get concrete from two different plants. You get two different, totally different feel and mixes. Uh, you're not quite sure if the two trucks are going to do it. Are you going to need that third truck or not? Um, so it's just it's it's a battle every day. You know, it's just typical residential construction. Nothing ever really seems to go perfect all the time. But you just got to deal with those little issues make the best of them and then just you know get, basically just get the job done so you can move on to the next job the next day and then if the builders or the carpenters or whatever they, if they're coming in the next day you know if they're planning on starting to build here at least you know they don't get messed up their plans stay the same and then all the subs that follow them you know can stay on schedule as well so we try to keep everybody on schedule the best we can about the only thing that really messes us up too much is if number one the, the excavator guys they don't get the subgrade done or they don't get it done right and they got to come back and fix it uh, the weather the weather really screws us up if it's going to rain you know that delays the pour 
and then that's basically it. Sometimes, sometimes the plumbing contractors they'll have to put plumbing in here for a bathroom or a shower or a kitchen if they're going to finish this off. But all in all, you know, we we try to keep everybody to to schedule, and we do a lot of these types of basement floors. We'll pour we pour multiple ones a week. But that's basically it, guys, for issues, you know, and. Again, let me know what you guys generally deal with for issues or what kind of questions you have. We'll talk about them in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.